Coming is finally here, and we've got all things WKU Sports coming up. There's no better person to hang out with on WKU's homecoming than President Tim Caboni. But first, we talked to Athletic Director Todd Stewart. All that and so much more coming up next on the game day edition of The Extra Point. The Extra Point. Welcome to The Extra Point. I'm Lauren Floyd, and I'm being joined under Guthrie Bell Tower by Patrick Carey and Ryan Gooden. We will also spend the afternoon with Caden Gaylord Day. Guys, it's homecoming here on the hill. How do you guys feel? Well, it's a beautiful day in Bowling Green. I'm kidding. It's freezing and cold out here right now, but I'm yes. so glad to finally be here. Yeah, it's nice. We were actually supposed to do it again. Inside, because of the rain, we were able to come out. Luckily, it has hold off for a little bit, so hopefully we'll, it'll keep that way for the next hour. That way we can get through the show without the rain. Well, the Hilltoppers are set to play in their annual homecoming game against the Charlotte 49ers. Reporter Nick Brake has more on the Hilltoppers' 103rd season to this point. It has been a season of ups and downs for the WKU football team. The Tops are 3-4, and four, heading into homecoming after a comfortable victory against FIU. The season started with a statement victory against UT Martin. Bailey Zappi made his presence known, throwing for seven touchdowns in his debut. I've... Personally, I went back and watched the Dowdy days, and to be able to see him do what he did on the field is incredible. And then you had Mike White right after him and the Ty Story, and you know those three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back QBs. They're all three great QBs and did great things here. And just to be able to be compared to those guys and be offensive-wise be compared to those type of offenses is awesome. After winning in week one, the tops fell on hard times. WKU lost to Army 38-35 to before heading home to face Indiana. The Hilltoppers put up a fight against the Hoosiers, but lost 33-31. to The team battled hard. That's a really good Indiana team. I thought defensively, you know, we, when we needed to get some stops, we got some. You know, offense at times scored really fast and did some good things, but it wasn't good enough. Western Kentucky closed out its non-conference play with a 48-31 to loss against 8th-ranked Michigan State. In their conference opener, the Hilltoppers continued to struggle defensively. The 23-ranked UTSA Roadrunners came to town and scored 52 points. With another defeat, the Hilltoppers fell to 1-4, and four, forcing them to reevaluate their 2021 campaign. All right, uh, just cohesiveness, uh, in my opinion, just staying together as a team. I don't separate because, um, you know, we'll, we'll be better together. So just everybody getting their mind right, getting mentally uh, mentally prepared for the stretch we're about to go on. No more bye weeks, um, no more breaks, so just pedal to the metal. After losing to San Antonio, WKU went on to win two straight games, beating Old Dominion and Florida International in the process. Despite having a losing record, the Tops are 2-1 and one in CUSA play and control their own destiny. With the Extra Point, I'm Nick Brick. For right now. Thanks, Nick. And now we'll say hello to reporter Abigail Green, who has more on the Hilltopper football team from Smith Stadium. Abigail? The WKU Hilltoppers are looking to beat the Charlotte 49ers this weekend. Both teams are 2-1 and one in conference play, and the winner will take the top spot in the CUSA standings. The tops will rely on quarterback Bailey Zappi and wide receiver Jared, Jared Stearns to lead them to victory this weekend. Kickoff will be at 3 o'clock today in Smith Stadium. Back to you. I'm ready to talk. I don't have an IFB, so I can't hear. Thanks, Abigail. With the kickoff a little under an hour away, we are now joined by the athletic director at Western Kentucky University, Todd Stewart. Todd Stewart is in his 10th year as director of athletic as a tenure and has been has been has seen 12 Hilltopper programs claim a total of 45 conference championships. WKU student athletes current 3.19 average GPA is also the highest in program history. Todd, thanks for joining us. Now, we uh, we appreciate you guys we coming on. It's a pleasure to have you on, but we need to ask a few questions. One, homecoming to you today. How do you feel about it and what what are you looking forward to the most? Football team uh, had a, a, a couple tough losses early on. We played a very difficult non-conference schedule, but they have stayed together. Uh, it's a well-coached team. It's a, a team that has really good player leadership, and you know, obviously, winning two straight games on the road now in the conference has some momentum going in our way, and, and I think we'll keep it going today. 
Well, I think the biggest thing, too, for the start of the WKU season was the Power 5 teams that they faced early on. Just as the athletic director, how awesome was it to see the scheduling work out perfectly to be able to play Michigan State, Army, and Indiana? Well, we have to take chances like that. You know, we, we say, we call it calculated risks, but I think that if we're going to have a national identity of a program and have respect beyond our region here in South Central Kentucky, we have to schedule aggressively, we have to play teams like that, and by playing them and then hopefully winning some of those, it puts a lot more of a favorable light on our program. Right. What all kind of goes into scheduling those tough opponents on such a highly anticipated season? Well, the schedule is usually done a number of years in advance. Jim Clark in our office helps me a lot with the football scheduling, and it's really just a lot of conversation and, and looking at at who is available and, and dates that are available and then trying to find good fits and good matches. And, you know, those are a real pluses because obviously it's a chance for a great win. It's usually a televised game, so we get national television exposure, exposure and it's really just a great way to grow our program. And I think, too, with that being said, you know, you didn't come out with the wins. WK plays closely to a lot of these mm -hmm. teams, but you don't always have to have that win to show that, you know, you're for real, especially against Indiana and against Army. And at the end of the game against Michigan State, the team played really well. What was the biggest takeaway for you with this team? Well, I think that we played teams that were really talented on a big stage, and we looked like we, we belonged. You know, we were competitive the whole way. We could have re really easily won the Indiana or Army game. And so it wasn't like it was a situation where we got overwhelmed and we're in over our head. Our guys are right there. And so even though we lost those games, and, and we're never about, you know, close losses, but even though we lost, I felt like this team is, is ready to take the next step. And when, when we get into conference play, we can do that. And obviously nobody likes the term moral victories, mm -hmm. but what has been your favorite moments here on Hill the last – couple of years at least since we've been here for the last four for football well, for football, for football yeah. well you know we're, we're about winning championships and winning bowl games so I think the seasons that we have done those have been the most memorable and you know we had a four-year stretch from 2014 to 2017 you know where we went to a bowl game four of those years won three times won two conference championships and we're actually ranked in 2015 and 2016 so from a, a football standpoint I would say that was the highlight for me so at the beginning of the season you bring in Zach Kittley, you bring in mm -hmm. Bailey Zappi, you bring in Jared Stearns, all from the same system, but they've came here and they have absolutely shown out in that system at a bigger level, so it shows how talented Zach Kittley is as an offensive coordinator. No, no question. I mean, uh, the, the Houston Baptist uh, additions have been phenomenal for us because Zappi leads the nation in passing, Jared Stearns leads the nation in receiving, and uh, obviously we feel like we can score on anybody. And with that being said, too, you know, that national attention that Jarrett Stearns and Bailey Zappi is getting, it also helps recruiting as well. How have you seen just the shift in energy with the WK football uh, program? Well, well, that's a great point because I think, you know, when you recruit players, you try to explain to them how they can perform in your system and what it might look like. So when they say two, see two players having the kind of success those two are, obviously that projects very well for what they think they might be able to do here. And we're going to shift gears and go to basketball season. It's right around the corner, about a week away from our first scrimmage, I believe. Um, yeah. So, obviously, a tough ending to last year. What would you kind of expect for this year coming up? Well, there's a lot of new faces. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, initially this team will have to just get used to playing with each other. Eight of our 13 players are new, but it's also a very talented roster. And I think the more they're, they, they're playing with games and just getting used to each other, I think this team will click, and, and I, I, you know, our goals don't change. Even though the roster changed, our goals don't change. We're about winning conference championships, and in the case of basketball, making the NCAA tournament, and uh, that hasn't changed. And I think the biggest thing, too, for this team this season is the transfers that have came in. Keith Williams, Jermaine Sharp, all mm -hmm. those guys. What has made WKU, specifically WKU basketball, such an attractive spot for transfer players? Well, I think, you know, what they, they look at, obviously, is the success of a program. I think they look at, at attendance. They see the crowds that we've had under Rick Stansbury here in Diddle Arena. They, you know, they want to know who you play in non-conference play, and we've scheduled aggressively in basketball just like we do in football, and we actually have nine Power 5 wins since Rick's here. We've been on TV a lot, and you know we haven't been to the NCAA tournament uh, in, in, since 2013, but we have been to two NITs and, and one in each one of those. So I think when they look at all that, it's, it's a very desirable spot. And kind of piggybacking off that, how big was it for you to finally get Louisville into Diddle Arena this year? Well, it's great. I mean, that's, that's probably the biggest game on our schedule, certainly, and it's been a nice series that we've had with them. But uh, one of the games is in Nashville, two are in Louisville, and one's here. So they only come here once every four years, so when they do, it's a special occasion, and Hopefully we can capitalize on it. And with the COVID rules, it, it's kind of been weird with, you know, players coming back for next year, yeah. whether it's a fifth year. How big was it to finally get Josh Anderson for a fifth year? Well, nice, because were, were it not for that, he would have graduated last year. So I think uh, anytime you can have a player of that caliber come back for another year, it just makes your team better. Well, real quick, before we head on out of here, what's your prediction for today? 
Well, you know, I, I feel like we're going to win the game. I really do. Charlotte's a, a good team. I mean, they beat Duke earlier this year. Uh, but I feel like our team has, has really settled in now. We're playing very well, probably, probably playing as well as we have all year. And I think we'll come out of it with a W and have three straight wins. Well, I appreciate you joining us, Mr. Stewart. And thank you for joining us. And the best of luck to the remainder of the athletic seasons. Now join us as meteorologist Dana Money with a first look at the weather. Dana, how's it going? Thank you for joining us for the Extra Point Homecoming Special. Right now, it's not looking too great outside. 51 degrees with some showers. Those showers will be sticking around with us, unfortunately, through the game this afternoon. As we look onto today's day planner, we'll actually get up into the higher 50s, but unfortunately, those temperatures will be going right back down tonight. That rain will stick around as we move through the next few hours into your evening normal high 67 on a day like today we're just a little bit below that a little bit below average this time of year kicking off at three o'clock it looks like there could be a mix of shower and rain it just depends on what we're going to get we'll just have to wait and see 58 degrees out right now for the game looking pretty nice otherwise the next few days we will have rain and storm chances ahead below average temperatures unfortunately but fall colors will be peaking soon back to you Thanks, Dana. Homecoming is back in full swing after COVID-19 for a very look, different looking occasion last year. Last night, the annual homecoming parade took place for the first time since 2019. Floats from various Greek and extracurricular organizations drove up College Street in front of a packed crowd. The route went through the historic downtown Bowling Green before ending up in front of Cherry Hall atop of campus of Western Kentucky University. The homecoming festivities concluded later today with homecoming queen tonight and the step show at Van Meter Hall following the game. Well, coming up on the extra point, we will sit down and talk to president of WKU himself, Mr. Timothy Caboni. And still to come, Travis Hudson joins us on set to discuss the 2021 volleyball season. saw a turtle my heart was full not anything but lonely we had this like deep connection this heart connection he just wants to be close to you and part of your life every day with turtle is a perfect day when i'm holding her it makes me feel calmer i think everything he does shows how much he loves us when we adopt a shelter pet we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things but they're all pure, pure love, love. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. <laughs> awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Joining us on the extra point is somebody everybody should know, the man with the plan, Mr. Bowtie Man, President Tim Caboni. <laughs> Sir, how are you doing today? Doing great. Happy homecoming. <laughs> it's good so, to be with you. Good. So, you know, 
first homecoming since 2019. You know, have you enjoyed it so far? What have you done? Have you talked to any alumni? Oh, uh, it's been remarkable. Uh, you know, the energy that being back in person brings to campus and to our our WKU family is outstanding, and we, we, we really missed the opportunity to do that last year. So last night, walking in the parade, a big red roar, terrific pep rally, lots of energy there. And then this morning, uh, visited with uh, student publications and uh, our W Club, uh, where we inducted five new uh, members into our Athletic Hall of Fame. I visited with some agriculture alumni out on the farm, and uh, now we'll be going from tailgate to tailgate until kickoff. Okay. Sounds very excited. So I attended the homecoming parade and Big Red's Roar last night. So what exactly was it like to have that atmosphere back on the hill? So one of the things that makes uh, the WK experience so special is uh, being together as a community, but also the right. energy and the excitement and the investment uh, right. in the campus. And so uh, when you have young people who uh, invest hundreds of hours putting those floats together, uh, it's going to be a celebration uh, of their accomplishment. And then uh, to be able to join the community in celebrating everything that WKU does for Bowling Green and Warren County. It's just a remarkable, remarkable example of the importance of this university right. uh, to the region. Yeah, I mean, I would say there was definitely a great turnout. It was raining during the parade, and there was definitely there was still a bunch of people out there just supporting us and watching us come down. You know, it, it it's uh, no matter what the weather is like, uh, folks love the university so much and love the experience of homecoming so much uh, that they, they show up, they show out, they wear red. And for, uh, for me, uh, one of the most fun things is seeing the, the kids, oh, like yes. the children, yes. just love, uh, not me so much, but big red. And uh, being able to give them a little sticker or trinket and, and you know, I, I hope uh, the message is that it's for them, uh, this is going to be their home on the hill when they finish high school. And absolutely, absolutely. So for you, you know, how impressed have you been with the fall sports this year? You know, what a what a remarkable season. Uh, you know, soccer has just been uh, performing great. You think about uh, the work that Travis Hudson, who I know is going to be joining you all a little bit later, what a, what a jewel of our campus, but also uh, that volleyball team and their success. You know, we didn't know what it was going to be like having a spring volleyball season and then a fall volleyball season. Uh, what, what they've shown is they haven't missed a beat, haven't missed exactly. a beat. And uh, last night was just a special senior night, and alumni night, and uh, coach, uh, coach says, said something that was really important, uh, that those young people are having success, not just because of the work that they do, but the work of all the alumni that w was put in before them. And that's true just about everything that we do. So uh, in, in our Olympic sports, a great season, but glad to have football and tailgating and in-person activities back on the hill. Uh, we missed so much last year, and for our first-year students, and even for our sophomore students, this is the first time we've really gotten to do it the way WKU does uh, tailgating and homecoming. I'm glad we have everybody on South Lawn now. We've got a little bit more space now that Tate Page Hall is gone, oh, yeah. and, and we're going to uh, extend a little bit, but it's just been a, it's been a terrific, energetic season, and I think people are just thankful to be able to be with one another again. You know, we're on here for a sports show. We're on here to have fun. There's obviously a lot of renovations going on around campus. What exactly is your vision for everything that we've got going on here? Well, when you, when you think about Western Kentucky University, you think about a great applied learning experience. And so everything we do is about creating an opportunity for young people um, to learn how to do, but then to do to learn. Right. And so uh, this is a great example of students mm. who no, don't just study theory, they actually get out in the real world mm. and do what they're gonna do after they leave campus. And so really excited about that. I know uh, the, the view from the top of the hill now to the southeast, which is similar to the one to the northwest in front of Van Meter now that Garrett is down, uh, will become a, a beautiful plaza at the south end of campus, uh, really transforming the first year experience with those two new buildings that right. open up with pod style living. Instead of entering with 3,000 other students, you enter with 23 good close friends who share an academic interest and you've got a faculty advisor that uh, mentors you along the way, classes taken together. It's just really um, a, a accelerating that uh, the, and deepening the, the educational experience in, in such that the 150 hours outside of class are right. as important as the 15 or 18 they spend inside class. It's absolutely, exciting. absolutely. So do you think the success of the athletics here um, will not only want, you know, help bring in more athletes, but bring in more general students in general? So the, I talked about this this morning at, at the breakfast with, uh, with the Hall of Fame uh, induction for our athletes. That the WKU experience is a complete college experience. And one of the things athletics does, it creates opportunities for us in, in a way that nothing else does to gather as a community. Uh, I wish 20,000 people would go watch one of our 
uh, theater productions, but that's not the world we live in. And so when you think about gatherings on this campus, the only gathering larger than homecoming is commencement. Uh, and so uh, it's important at creating community, it's important at creating visibility. And for me, as a sports fan, uh, there's nothing more exciting than having teams that win. And that's true for everything that we do as a university. We want the best, we want to compete at the highest levels. That's in forensics, that's in cheer, that's in football. Hey, lastly, we're going to end you with this question. What are your predictions for tonight's game against Charlotte? So I think we're going to beat the over at 72. I know we got a 17.5 gap. We're going to beat the spread, and uh, I'm going to call it 48-32. Uh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, sadly, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Caboni. It's a pleasure to be with you. Happy homecoming. Go Tops. <laughs> After the break, we will recap the 2021 season for the WKU volleyball team. And who better to discuss the volleyball team than head coach Travis Hudson. He joins us on set next. The black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Wash, washy, wash, washy, wash, wash your hands. Scrub them while you sing this song. Wash, washy, wash, washy, wash, wash. Scrub your hands and fingers in the places in between. Using soap and water makes your hands so clean. Wash your hands. Taking care of yourself is also taking care of others. We are all in this together. What a season it's been for the Hilltopper volleyball team. Reporter Addie Shaney has more on the dominance WKU has once again had in Conference USA, and especially in all of volleyball. It's been another remarkable season for the Lady Topper volleyball team. Travis Hudson has led the team to 22 consecutive 20 win seasons, which is the second longest active streak in all of NCAA volleyball history. The Tops started off their season against the 2020 national champions. WKU hosted the Kentucky Wildcats for an exhibition matchup resulting in a close 2-2 set draw. You know, we've only been in the gym a week with the coaches, but like Travis alluded to, we have the second team right now and they are pushing us every single day. They're they're playing amazing out of their minds. I mean, the freshmen um, all the way down the list. Our, our roster is very deep this year and I think that's just going to set the bar for where we end this season and it's obviously set the bar for where we were today. The Lady Toppers were on a heated 8-0 winning streak until they hosted the Ole Miss Rebels. WKU fell short 3-1, which was their first loss since September 2019. We played our guts out and we gave it all and we just didn't play well enough to finish it off. And like he said, Ole Miss played really, really well. And I do think teamwork played a role just by us like continuing to fight and just push through and no matter what was going on, just like continue to try to just keep going, if that makes sense. After their unforeseen loss to the Rebels, the Hilltoppers recovered smoothly with four straight sweeps. 
The Lady Toppers then went on to face their rivals, the Marshall Thundering Herd. WKU went on to sweep Marshall in both of their back-to-back matchups, 3-0. Um, you know, I'm so confident, so deep in this roster that uh, if anybody's struggling for too long, you know, you, you pull them out of a match, not as punishment, but because you have another good option. And that's a really, really nice luxury for our program to have right now. Since their victory, it has been purely uphill for the Lady Toppers. As of October 27th, WKU had a remarkable 20 to 1 record and is currently ranked 18th in NCAA Division 1. Senior Lauren Matthews has been a key leader on the court with a .493 hitting percentage. This is the highest percentage in the country for the 2021 season. The Lady Toppers have two weeks left in the regular season. The CUSA tournament is approaching quickly, and WKU hopes to defend their 2020 conference title. Well, first off, congratulations, Coach Hudson, on winning the CUSA East Division last night. Alumni in the building, I'm sure it was a lot of fun. but. More importantly, last year COVID hit and you had the returning players. What made it so special last night to win with this group? Well, because it was such a journey. I mean, it, it, we played two seasons in one calendar year, which right. is, is just a really emotionally draining thing. And so it's been a struggle throughout this year, even though we've had a lot of success. And then, you know, to, to do it in front of our alumni, you know, coming back into town, have so many of the kids that helped build this program there, uh, for a guy like me, made it a really, really special night. You know, after having last year's season moved to the spring and picking right back up in the fall, there wasn't much time to prepare in the off season. So, like, what's it been like just having to, like, do that transition? Because that's something that we have never seen before. Yeah, it was – it was less about preparation and it was more about recovery, right. if you will. I mean, you know, not only did we play in the spring, but our season got extended because right. we went deep in the NCAA tournament. Right. And so, uh, it, you know, we only had a two month layoff. We usually have a nine month layoff. Yeah. And so uh, it was more just about recovery. And when I say recovery, I mean more than physical recovery, but just mentally trying to refresh a little bit. And, exactly. and that's that's been the big challenge. I would definitely say that that's one of the main struggles is once you play for so long, I mean, and it's just like what, physical, mental, everything like that, and you just have to have that time to recover. And But obviously you all have came back to do conference champs again. I mean, it's definitely been a great season so Yeah, far. well, it, it, I think it speaks to the culture of our program. Exactly. You know, I, I think it says a lot about the togetherness of these kids and a lot about the, the, the expectation level on a daily basis. And, right. um, you know, I, I talk a lot about our culture in our program, and, and I think this season has been the ultimate test of that culture because everybody's really been worn pretty thin from day one, coaches included. Yes. And, and somehow, you know, we stuck together, won another championship, and there was a lot of love in that locker room last night and in that arena last night it was fun to see well I think you hit on it perfectly it's the culture but for you what has made WKU so special it, it's home for you obviously and, and what makes you keep coming back and doing so well with WKU well I you know I'm a hilltopper you know I, I was a WKU student that walked this campus and um, and there were so many people here that impacted my young life and uh, you know, I've always said I, I don't think I'm a college volleyball coach. I think I'm the Western Kentucky volleyball coach. And yes, I, I, it's are. just the way I've always felt about it. And I don't know that I could do it as well anywhere else. And uh, this place means a lot to me. And, and I, I try to I try to impact it in more ways than just winning volleyball games. And, you know, there's a lot of a lot of positive, great things that go on around this campus. And uh, and I want our kids to be exposed to many of those. And and I want to be a part of as many of them as I can as well. Well, it's 100 percent of volleyball school for anybody that's not aware of that <laughs> I can second that for sure um, but when coming back to culture when you recruit what goes into recruiting the right players for not only your system but the culture that you've developed here on the hill yeah uh, I always say this but you know I, I decided I was never going to be a, I was never going to be hijacked by talent you know, I was never going to let the talent of a player be what dictated them wearing a WKU uniform. Yes, they have to be talented for us to win at a high level, but uh, to win, to sustain high level excellence, you know, it's about who are you every day and what are you going to be like on your bad days and when you're tired and when there's injuries and when there's tests and boyfriends and all these other things <laughs> that go into it. It's a lot more than just being a talented volleyball player. Right. And, and I've tried to stand by that in recruiting, and I think that that's what's led to the consistency that our program has had. You know, speaking of recruiting, since, uh, like, everyone decided to return, especially the seniors, how did that affect your recruiting for this season? Well, it, it, it really messed things <laughs> up. And, it, it, you know, the biggest roster I've ever had is 13 players. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we have 18. And um, it's been unusual. It's been uncomfortable. 
Uh, and it's put it's been an ultimate test because they're all alphas. They're all kids that that want to be on the court. And right. you know, when you can only put six of them out there at a time, then you're asking a lot of kids to accept roles that they're not necessarily you know wanting to accept. But but again, that's when you start leaning into that culture of of what you're like. The you know, we, we're on the court three hours a day, mm -hmm. and I talk a lot about what are you like in those other 21 hours because mm -hmm. that that's ultimately what we're trying to get accomplished. I agree. Well, one more quick question. It's postseason time now, so. The last few years, you've gone deeper and deeper into the NCAA tournament. This year, it's the last hoorah for a few players. What is making this season so important, and, and what are you looking for in the postseason? Yeah, with I, to be honest, I'm looking for them to enjoy this process, enjoy the ride. They've accomplished so much, and there's been so much pressure on them from day one. And I, I'm not here to add any of that. I, I've never set out and told anybody that we were ever going to win a championship. I, I just want our team to be in a position to have success and, and play for championships at the end. And this team's doing that. And they I are. want them to enjoy every step of the process. Well, a lot of students – one more thing, I'm sorry. A lot of students have – talked about getting a statue for you because you are such an icon here. What hey, are your quick he thoughts on that real quick? Well, I, I think it would take a lot of bronze for this head. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I listen, I, I'm, I'm so, there's so many great men and women that have come before me that have impacted so many people on the athletic side, on the academic side, that, that to just hear my name mentioned with them is more than enough of an honor to me. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Coach Hudson. We really appreciate it. Well, don't go anywhere. We got soccer. The Hilltoppers are preparing for the CUSA East Championship after another strong season under De Jason Nidell. Here's more on the Hilltoppers 2021 campaign. The Hilltoppers soccer team will head into the CUSA tournament after having a solid season in 2021. Jason Nidell's squad had many questions heading into the campaign due to the absence of star midfielder Amber Barnett. The Tops got off to their best start in program history after going 5-0 before losing to Ole Miss back in September. Well. Uh, it's been a, a long time since we've been down a goal. Um, and, you know, the game of soccer is hard to score. Um, and trying to figure out how to come from behind is something that this team has not had to do. The loss served as a wake up call going into conference play. WKU won four straight, starting division play with a perfect 12 points from four matches. Since then, it hasn't been the same for the tops. The loss of the Old Dominion, UTEP, and Florida Atlantic has served as warning signs heading into conference play. Our coaches are really good at scouting teams and knowing how to break them down. So as long as we're executing and understanding that to our full potential, I think we'll, we'll have a most successful chance to win. The conference tournament will get underway on Monday in Boca Raton, Florida. For the extra point, I'm Jamal Munchner. Coming up on the Extra Point, we visit with redshirt senior Luke Frampton to discuss this upcoming basketball season. And later on, we'll hear from reporter Drew Brumfield about his experience with wheelchair basketball. Yo, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... <laughs> Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60, two over 50, one over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. Basketball season is on the horizon, meaning it's almost time for us to make our way into Diddle Arena. 
The 2021 WKU men's basketball season is kicking into high gear as the team prepares for opening night. WKU has been 9-6 against Power 5 teams in the Stansberry era, and this year presents more challenges as the Hilltoppers will face up to five Power 5 teams in the non-conference schedule. Then we go right off the bat, get Minnesota. Win that when you got South Carolina. Then we turn around and play a non-Power 5 team that's going to be a top 10 team in the country. Who is that? Memphis, that's right. Top 10 team in the country. Then we've got home games at against Louisville. We always know how they're always going to be good. Got Ole Miss in a tournament in Atlanta. This year's team looks a lot different with a total of eight new players added to the roster. A lot of progress in these days. I, I, I like the direction we're heading. Got a long way to go. I like the direction we're heading. And again, like I said earlier, I like our pieces. They're all different. They knew, you know. Um, and we don't have time to uh, bring pieces long. You got some pieces you may have for six months, new pieces. You know, that's, you know, some of them you have more, more than that, but that's where our game is. Josh Anderson took an extra year of eligibility to come back for a fifth season, as he is the first player in WKU basketball history to earn five letters. Honestly, I knew after the championship game, you know, once we lost, it was kind of like a no-brainer for me. I wanted to come back and win the championship here and also just to get, finish my degree out, so. WKU basketball has had its fair share of transfers over the past few years, but the players say this year feels a little bit different. Uh, I feel like this group, we have a lot more experience than the past groups. Just from um, a lot of the transfers, they're four-year seniors, five-year seniors, fifth-year seniors, and so I feel like just um, we have a lot of players who played a lot of minutes in college ball, so it wasn't really hard for us to come together and mess cause, because of the experience. With a total of nine players on the roster listed as a guard, rotations and starting lineups have been in question from the beginning. But for the players, it's about contributing in any way they can on and off the court. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just try to do whatever it takes to win. Uh, that's all I'm worried about. I don't care if I make a three all season. As long as we're winning, I'm happy. Uh, I, I know it's the same thing for these guys. As long as we win, we're good. For the Extra Point, I'm Caden Gaylord Day. One member of the WKU basketball team is Luke Frampton. Reporter Nick Brake sat down with the redshirt senior to discuss the upcoming season as well as his journey to WKU. A couple seasons ago, transferred from Davidson. Yeah. Um, what do you think has been? What's the difference really between here at WKU and Davidson? Like you know, walking around campus, also, but the culture of the school and and the basketball program. Uh, well, WKU is a lot bigger, uh, that's for sure. Uh, Davidson only had like 1,800 students when I was down there, so you're seeing the same people over and over. Uh, you get to know everybody pretty well, but I think the biggest difference was just how big campus is, and there's more people, obviously. Um, but knowing people on the team last year kind of made the transition a little bit easier, uh, like Tay and uh, Josh. I knew a couple of those guys uh, beforehand, so uh, it made it a lot easier. Um, so you essentially, you while you were playing at Davidson, I know that's a while ago, uh, you know, whenever you announced your com commitment to Western, mm -hmm. uh, everyone you know, looking at your stats and stuff, they're like, okay, so there's the stats that say Luke Frampton and Steph Curry. Yeah. Uh, I know you, you get this a lot, I'm sure, but how does it <coughs> feel to have your two names uh, sitting alone in a lot of different uh, statistic categories? Uh, it's pretty special, man, because uh, Steph really has changed the game of basketball. And, uh, you know, having my name up there with one of the greatest shooters of all time really uh, is something that will always be special to me. Have you ever met Steph? Yeah, he came to a couple of our games uh, when we were down there. Uh, he came to our St. Joe game. It was when the All-Star Weekend was in Charlotte and uh, we had like special uniforms. We were like black and yellow or something crazy, but it was it was pretty dope. Okay, I hate mentioning this. Uh, what did this, you know, has the loss to North Texas, has it become a positive uh, energy now? Oh, I mean, it, it hurt at first, absolutely, uh, but you know, after we got a couple games in the NIT, I think it kind of boosted our confidence a little bit more. Um, and then just coming back into the season, we got to be ready to go, man. And that's what it comes down to, ready to fight and uh, work hard all season and chase that championship. WKU fans have gotten used to new blood. Yeah. Um, every year it feels like we get a, a plethora of really good transfer talents, you being last year. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot this year too. Absolutely. Uh, how does it feel? Uh, is there continuity yet in the locker room? Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. It, it's, it's easy to talk to those guys that came in, um, you know, and they've played at a high level at different schools already. So uh, 
basketball wise, they already know how to play, so it makes that transition so much easier. Uh, it, you did it last year, but you, you cut the flow. Uh, do you ever miss it? Do you ever miss <laughs> oh, the hair? man, I get this question all the Absolutely, I miss <laughs> the hair, man. Uh, my wife made me cut it for our wedding pictures, so yeah, okay, I, that makes I've, sense. I've had it chopped off ever since, but I don't know. It might make a comeback. We'll see. Okay, okay. Well, we'll look forward to it. Yeah, exactly. It uh, I really appreciate it. Um, uh, good luck this season. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be great. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Well, it's football season, obviously, because it's homecoming here on the Hill, but basketball season, believe it or not, is just around the corner, guys. Yeah, man, I'm literally, I'm so excited for the season to start. I don't know what to expect, really, but honestly, there, we have to expect big things at this point. I mean, this WKU team, they brought in so many transfers, so many seasoned vets, right. I guess you could say, in the college world, and there's really no other choice but to win the conference. And like you said, conference championship, that's the goal. It's been a rough goal to reach for the last three to four years for Rick Stansbury and this team, but the transfers with COVID being, there's a lot of them, there's like nine or ten, I believe, going into the season. That's a lot of new people for Rick Stansbury to get together uh, right before the season. What do you expect for this for this team there, Patrick? Well, you guys hit it on the head. Conference USA Championship is the goal. They've been there three out of the last four years. They've had the chances to do it, but they just don't know how to get over that hump and how to win. They bring in the seasoned veterans that know how to win. They win where they're from, specifically Keith Williams. I'm a huge fan of Keith Williams. He's gritty. He plays defense. He can shoot. He can play iso ball. And that's what WKU has been lacking this last couple years is that one player that you can really rely on. Yeah, and also guard play has to step up this year. I mean, you bring in Zion Harmon, uh, you you bring back Davion McKnight, hoping that his jump shot has gotten a little bit better than it was last year. So guard play and keeping down the turnovers and shooting is a big, big reason, a big important thing that they need to fix this year. And shooting, you mentioned it, Jerry is Hamilton, one of the best shooters on this team other than Luke Frampton, 6'8 guy from Maryland. He could be a real asset to this team by the end of the season. Now, the question I have is the big men, who, like, Jamarian Sharp, 7'5", tall, tallest college basketball player in the nation, but can you start him right away? Uh, that's, that's the that, question. That's, 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 <laughs> that's not a question. I, I mean, maybe. I, I, I mean, you got Darius Miles who's in there as well. Right. But, you, like, Jalen Butts could be the starter from the transfer from DePaul, 6'8". You could have that Carson Williams type of role at the five, especially during Conference USA. Obviously, non-conference will be a little harder to go small ball like that, but Conference USA – Kenneth Lofton's going to be a problem once, once conference starts. So it We're shifting gears from men's basketball to women's basketball. The women's basketball team will open their season on November 10th against Purdue. The Tops will begin life without the all-time great center Raneem el Jadewi, who graduated last May. The Lady Tops will return Meryl Abdegawad, who is the second leading scorer a season ago, averaging 10 points per game. Sophomore Hope Saveri will look to become a prominent figure in Greg Collins' starting five after averaging nine points in her freshman campaign. WKU is currently in preseason and will play West Virginia State in an exhibition game on Wednesday night. And coming up on the extra point, we'll check in with the WKU cross country team as they finish up their CUSA championship meet. But first, Dana Money will give us a look at the game day weather forecast coming up. saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm so 
sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! homecoming special current temperatures right now in the 50s you'll see they're pretty uniform all throughout with those rain showers around that wind will be whipping though so be careful of that if you're going to have an umbrella you definitely don't want that to blow away today as those winds are pretty wicked out there glasgow a little bit of the same at 51 degrees it's going to be a wide range of chimps over the next few days we'll see those 50s all over the place and maybe a little bit of the 30s as our evening temperatures i know not many people like to hear that but here's our chance of precipitation as we move throughout the next five days as you can see saturday on our homecoming game day it's going to be 64 percent so you'll just have to keep an eye out for those changing conditions we will have scattered showers and thunderstorms on that day however for our halloween forecast on sunday only an eight percent chance of rain so it really won't be that bad if you're looking to take the kids out, go trick or treat, or just enjoy the holiday in itself. As far as today goes, those rain showers will unfortunately be sticking around, bothering us. However, that wind will continue to stay at nine to 10 miles an hour. It'll be variable throughout the day. And then as we move into tonight, the rain will be a little bit calmer as well as those winds will back off a little bit not too cold since we will have that cloud cover 53 degrees tomorrow for your halloween 58 degrees not too bad the occasional shower will be around in the area so maybe just make sure you keep an eye out for those if you have a radar on your phone you might want to check that before you head out to go trick-or-treat or any other festivities that you have planned for tomorrow as far as the hourly planner goes on your homecoming saturday We'll start out in the mid to upper 50s and then we'll just move in to the lower 50s as we move in through the rest of the evening. Those rain showers, once again, will be around, so you'll just have to keep an eye out for that. And then what everybody has been waiting for, our kickoff forecast at 3 o'clock, it will be 58 degrees and partly sunny. Showers will be around, once again, keep that radar handy as well as the umbrella. You will need it these next few days. As you can see, chances for rain. Thank you, Dana, on the forecast. But right now we're seeing conditions outside with mostly cloudy skies, maybe a few raindrops like it is right now, but it's not gonna be anything too overbearing for any homecoming festivities that you're gonna have here throughout the rest of the evening into the weekend as well. And then going on into the Halloween forecast, things are going to begin to clear up with nice seasonal temperatures. The black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're gonna get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm gonna get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. 
wash, washy, wash, washy, wash, wash your hands. Scrub them while you sing the song. Wash, washy, wash, washy, wash, wash. Rub your hands and fingers in the place they can be tweaked. Using soap and water, make sure that's a great wash your hands. Great job, you're almost done. Five, four, three, two, one. Taking care of yourself is also taking care of others. We are all in this together. Listen, we've talked a lot of sports so far, but now it's time to talk about a new sport coming to campus. Reporter Drew Brumfield shows us how this new program is allowing new opportunities to everyone on campus. Athletics are more than just your physical ability. Western Kentucky senior Madison Duncan had to learn this lesson very early in her life. So I became paralyzed in the eighth grade. I woke up one morning fine. Within an hour and a half, I was paralyzed from the waist down. And so I have something called transverse myelitis, where my antibodies went and they attacked my spine and paralyzed me from the waist down. Despite learning that she would need a wheelchair, Madison continued to do different sports in high school, like adaptive shot put and adaptive basketball. She says sports have made a huge impact in her life. It's been really important, it's just kind of a, a cool thing to be able to do and, and it helps take your mind off of some of the, the more like hard things that you know, people in, with disabilities go through. Through her internship with the Bowling Green Parks and Recreations Department, Madison helped host an adaptive athletics showcase. Um, so this showcase is just kind of introducing adapted sports to the campus of Western. Um, this is a new kind of sport club that we've created and this is kind of like the kickoff to show students what we have and what we're starting on campus. The showcase includes sports like adaptive basketball and adaptive tennis. Madison hopes for this program to grow into a more competitive competition. The overall goal is to eventually establish a competitive basketball team for Western's campus that we can go and compete against other colleges who have adapted programs. The team would not just be for people with disabilities. I think I just want people to know that it's open to everybody. That it's not just only for people with disabilities. That even if you don't have one, you can come out and still play and have a good time. Reporting for the Extra Point. I am Drew Brumfield. For more about adaptive sports or to sign up for the program itself, visit wku.edu slash campus recreation and wellness. And the WKU cross country team just concluded their run in the Conference USA meet earlier this morning in Charlotte, North Carolina. The women's team improved dramatically over the year, finishing eighth as a whole. Senior Savannah Heckman was the first finisher of the Lady Tops, placing 14th overall with a time of 21.42 in the 6K. Savannah has been the number one finisher for the girls in every race this season. The men's team finished ninth overall with senior Clint Sherman leading the way with a time of 25.53 in the AK. The tops will finish out their season on November 13th in Louisville for regionals. Well, we've got a special hero on the hill. We'll, take, we'll tell you who it is next on the Extra Point. And we will reveal our picks for today's homecoming game against Charlotte. Yo, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. 
and that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. With homecoming taking place at Western Kentucky University, the Department of Student Activities hosted a homecoming games event for students involved in Greek life. These games included six different events, which included a dizzy bat race, a tire rolling relay, a balloon in the air relay, two by four relay, an egg toss, and a wheelbarrow relay. I played in the dizzy bat relay, and I think that was fun just because like, as soon as like, you take off, you're like, whoa, where am I? And like, where am I doing? And it's not something that you'd expect, and it's like not something you do every day. So I was like, that's fine. I like that. Although the competition was fierce, Alpha Omicron Pi, Kappa Sigma, and Alpha Kappa Alpha were the ultimate winners of this event. This past Sunday, the New York Jets battled the New England Patriots in Fox, Foxborough, Massachusetts. During the game, Jets quarterback Zach Wilson went down with an injury. This led to former WKU Hilltopper Mike White stepping in, completing 20 of 32 passes for 202 yards with one touchdown and two interceptions. And the Jets lost to the Patriots. However, it was just announced that this week that White will be making his first career start this Sunday when the Jets host the Cincinnati Bengals. Good luck to Mike and congratulations. You are this week's Hero on the Hill. So guys, it is that time of the show predictions WKU versus Charlotte I guess I will go first WKU has been on a you know a little win streak two games two game win streak yeah, on the road yeah. that's a bigger part of it is on the road on the road and the defense has stepped up I believe last game they had what seven seven, seven, seven sacks uh you wouldn't have thought that would ever happen with this defense <laughs> this defense season has stepped up. so they stepped up great and I'm I'm looking forward to what they're going to put on the field today so with that being said I personally am taking WKU over Charlotte, 38 to 24. All right, my prediction, of course, I'm definitely going to have to go with WKU. I mean, it's homecoming. We're here on the hill. What else could you expect? I mean, I honestly think it's going to be a closer game than what they're predicting. Uh, I would say the game probably 35, 28, something like that. I mean, we're, we're pretty close in record with Charlotte. I mean, it's definitely going to be a tough game. What about you, Patrick? Well, listen. If I was to pick Charlotte, would I get ran out of Bowling Green? Absolutely. <laughs> in that case, give me the – I'm just playing. I'm going to take the tops in this one. I think that Bailey Zappi in this offense is electric. The defense has stepped up, which is the biggest part, the biggest piece, I should say, Absolutely. of this puzzle. So I'm going to take the tops. We'll say 41-28. Well, you kind of talked about that electric offense. It's going to be harder today. It is wet and rainy and cold outside. The ball might be slipping out a little bit. So – for Jarrett Stearns and Bailey Zappi to kind of get that early connection will be huge uh, for this offense. But for the defense, like you said, the corners need to stay intact. The secondary has to be better than it has been. But this front seven, the last two games, you're putting up 11 sacks in two games. That That is numbers you have to start replicating throughout the rest of the season. Uh, and for WKU, I'm going to take them. I'm going to say 41 to 32 in a weird score. But uh, this top team, I mean, you're going to have to, you're going to want to come out. It's going to be homecoming night. It's, it's going to be a great atmosphere, so come out and support the tops. I think piggybacking off what Ryan said with this is the defensive front has to step up today and create pressure on Charlotte's quarterback yes. because you can't rely that heavily on your secondary, especially WKU secondary so far this season. It, it just puts a lot of strain and pressure, which is the reason why the WKU defense has struggled so much so far this season, except for their two-game win streak where the defensive front showed up. Well, and you would hope with a rainy day, usually that's when the run game comes in attacked. WKU's run game isn't there much. I mean, they, but they it's, it's not bad. It's, it's not coming. Not bad. It's coming. It's gotten, it's it is there. Better. And we're going to see a lot more of that today, I have a feeling. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We are going to take you onto the hill, go to there at 3 o'clock, kickoff time for Western Kentucky. And as always, guys, it's, it's up, up and it's good. good.